Hi there, everyone. Uh, welcome back to another episode of uh, DIY CNC Plasma by Novice. Um, sorry this one's taken so long. We're sort of straight into it today. Uh, what we did is I've got I had some hex bar laying around the shed uh, that I thought I'd just test out to see how this would work uh, for the for the x-axis. So what we uh, what we're doing here is I'm just shoring up a little bit of hex bar. I just thought it'd be a bit of roll surface uh, for that that x-axis. Um, so here we just sort of put a couple of shims under there to try and get the uh, the distance. I measured the distance between uh, the top and bottom wheels on the on the carriage and we've uh, just transferring, I've sort of measured those up to try and fit them up um, to make this uh, hex bar fit the way it should. So we're just sort of tacking them in place for the moment. Um, I've got it sitting across the actual table itself to try and get um, or make it as, as neat as possible and as straight as possible. Um, and it's just a case of just some small little tacks uh, on each of the, uh, or just along each along that uh, that hex bar there. So what you're seeing here is I've actually got it turned on its side. So I'm just doing the bottom rail at the moment. Um, so just some little tacks. Uh, it's not going to be 100% true. So I don't know whether I'm going to continue to stay with this method or whether I'm actually going to have to go and get out. Go. I've got a sheet of um, five mil. Um, flat bar there so that I might look at using uh, and what I found I had to do is just for a bit of extra um, I guess extra movement I've just elongated the holes a little bit in the in the plate uh, so just whacked it on the mill um, and just made the holes a little bit bigger so I can uh, I've got a little bit of adjustment and these are only on the only adjustment is on the actual bottom uh, bearings uh, here we had a bit of a, I found that once I put the carriage on, um, there was a little bit of binding on it. So I've just basically took that, uh, grinded that off. And now what I'm doing uh, is I've put a shim on the other side. And sorry for the camera work, I didn't actually have the, I thought I had a second camera set up, but it didn't. You'll probably see it there in the background. Unfortunately, something happened with the footage on that camera. So I don't actually get, uh, you, don't, you can't actually see what, uh, what I did, uh, but I've got a little shim in my hand. And I'm just putting it in between the top and bottom rail and uh, moving the carriage down just to making sure to see if it binds uh, and just to try and set that spacing out so it's it's pretty even along the entire way. And I was actually quite surprised with, with how well this actually did. I, I literally just tacked the two ends, put the shim a little bit down, run the carriage to the shim, tacked, and repeat, rinse and repeat, basically the the entire way down through the uh, through through the running of the of the axis, and it um, yeah, as I said, it was quite surprising on how well it actually uh, it actually worked, and and the the I guess the limit it limited the amount of play that was actually in the in the way the carriage was was running. So yeah, so we're just setting it up here, getting it ready to weld. Um, it's a bit of a finicky process, so I, I tried to get it as, as nice and, and to run as smoothly as possible. Um, and as I was saying earlier, there is an alternative where I can probably cut these off um, and then put on a piece of flat steel and probably have uh, a center bolt, two at the ends and then two in the middle that will be slotted. And I can just bind it on, bolt it in the center and use that as a pivot and then center it or I might do it have a center hole at one end and then have slots running all the way down it so I can uh, so I can center it off that way as well so um, but the steel I've got it's got a lot of mill scale on it and it need a fair bit of prep work so uh, this hex bar uh, is actually really really nice the the surface quality is actually really really good so uh, I'm hoping this uh, will will do the job for me so we uh, just continue on here with a bit more spacing and sliding and moving and um, pretty much this was the finished product. So uh, I was pretty happy with it. I'm still pretty happy with it. Uh, 
can see from the roll here, that's fairly gentle. Uh, and it rolls actually quite well. Um, I was actually quite surprised with how well it actually does roll. It's probably not as smooth as I wanted, but I, with a bit of slight adjustment on those bottom bolts, I could probably loosen it up a bit. And uh, I've added a new piece of machinery to the shed, uh, picked up pretty much the bargain of the century. Uh, picked up this, um, this lathe um, off an old gentleman who was uh, clearing out his shop and um, it's 35 years old but it is in absolutely amazing uh, condition. Uh, the ways on it are pretty much immaculate. Everything runs really, really smoothly. So I've, uh, I've been doing a fair bit of playing around on this. Uh, it's, it's actually a beautiful, beautiful old girl. Uh, it does the job really well. It's, a, it's an LAM and it was made in, uh, in Thailand. Uh, no, not Taiwan. Um, there's very limited play in the headstock there. The, uh, the saddle there runs really, really nicely. And for the price I got it for, I got basically the lathe, the stand, um, some just an assortment of tooling, um, and uh, I've got some fixed steady, the travelling steady, um, a whole heap of cutting, uh, high speed steel cutting, and I even got some carbide cutting there, uh, some carbide cutting tips. Basically got the little side table there, uh, everything on it, the oil oilers, oil cans whole heap of um, lubricant. Uh, the only thing I had to go out was buy some whey oil. Uh, yeah, so thanks for watching and uh, thanks for sticking around and to those that have subscribed, I really do appreciate it. Thanks again. Cheers.